So welcome back to our AquaDo programming challenge. So far we've got uh, the set player names task done and we're about to move on to the next task in our booklet which says develop the part of the program so that when the play game option is selected from the main menu the initial state of the game is displayed. The board and pieces do not have to be shown in exactly the same way as they've been used already. Any display that clearly shows the 11 spaces on the board, the current positions of the four pieces which belong uh, to the player to which player is fine. So develop the part of the program that just kicks off uh, the initial state of the game. Well, that's uh, pretty straightforward because I've already given you uh, a method called show board to do that. So let's actually have a new subroutine called play game. And this subroutine is going to control the whole gameplay loop. And um, I've done some thinking about this already. And I've worked out that basically... Um, this is kind of the process, and forgive the ticks, but that's where I got up to with uh, my particular class when I made these videos. So let's think about a single go, a single play. What do we do? Well, first of all, before we actually really do anything, we want to just choose which is the first player, so we might do that. Then um, we want to uh, show the board so that the user can, can see the positions. Then we want to roll the dice and show the result. Then we need to check if a player can make a move. And if they can't move, then it just changes turn. It goes back to uh, the next person's go and shows the board again. If they can move, uh, then we need to select a piece to move. And we then move the selected counter um, for as many spaces as is applicable based on the die roll. Of course, it's possible that um, once they've selected a piece to move that that piece itself can't be moved and they have to choose the other one so we might need to do a little verification of that and return an error message if so. Uh, then um, if uh, if we've moved onto a safe row then that's fine there's nothing else to check because if you're on a safe row and other pieces are there there's nothing you're going to do with them it doesn't matter. But if we're not on a safe row, then we need to check well are other players on the same row and if they are reset them back to position one and that's the end of the go um, and then uh, we would check for a winner um, to see if, if, if both pieces of one particular characters or one particular player have now reached the uh, row 11 stage and if uh, if not if there is no winner then we go right back to the start and we show the board and it becomes the other person's turn and we go all through that process again and again and again and again and again until eventually someone has won so for this to work, we're just gonna we're gonna go through um, just thinking first of all about that initial first go, and over the course of um, the next few uh, steps, we're gonna add in the code to actually check if there's a winner and handle all of the necessary logic in the game. So let's start off with showing the board. So play game. First thing we need to do is um, show the board. So uh, show board. That'll do it. Um, I think that's our task complete. Um, develop the part of the program that when play game is selected from the main menu, the initial state of the game is displayed. The board and pieces do not have to be shown exactly. Any display that clearly shows 11 spaces on the board, current positions of the four pieces and which belongs to which player is fine. Yep, I think we've done that. Um, the only thing we haven't done, I need to just copy that, is hook this into our main menu. So let's go back to our main menu and say, well, if you choose option two, which is to play the game, then we need to run the play game procedure. Let's give it a go. Run. Let's enter some player names. Dave and Jane again. Let's now play game. And has it worked? It did show us a board and it said it was Dave's turn who was player one. And actually, yes, it's shown the initial state of the board because I forgot that in a previous uh, episode of this, I had set my uh, global variable values for the counters to not all be at the start row so that's why they're all over the place but it has worked it's shown the board in the initial state and it said whose go it is fantastic that's a very good place to be we, we, we're making great progress there was very little we had to do because to be fair um, I'd already written the code for showing the board so what comes next develop the part of the program that generates random numbers to simulate the rolling of a four-sided die the program should tell the player the result of the die roll and tell them the action that corresponds to the result of the die roll okay so it's going to be one two three four are our potential options it's got to be randomly generated 
and it's got to tell the user what the outcome is uh, based on um, based on let's go sorry back to the uh, game based on these rules so if the die rolls are one then it, the player can choose to move one of their pieces one space near a finish if it's two they can move two spaces if it's three they can move three if it's four they can they have to choose one piece to move back towards the start so it also says if the players have not entered their names and default names oh sorry i've missed the line it says the program should use the players names when displaying the message so it might say something like um dave has rolled a uh, three for example Dave must select a, a counter to move or whatever. Okay, so let's have a go at this. We're going to make a uh, generating a random number to simulate the rolling of a four-sided die. Back to Replit we go and let's create a new subroutine. I'm going to shove it in here above the play game one so it's already defined by the time I call it. And let's call it roll die. And for this, we're going to need to make use of our uh, random number generation, which I imported on uh, line one. So I said from random, which is an external library, import the function randint, which means I can use randint in my method. So I'm going to say uh, the die value is equal to randint between one and four. That's going to give me a random value between one and four. Okay, that's the first part done. That was really easy, but now we need to print out the... Um, message to show um, to the user uh, whatever it is that um, that means so let's call that maybe something like action message and I'm gonna put this in an if I'm gonna say if value of the die is one then action message is um, and I'm just trying to think do we need the players name in this um, it's going to say something like so and so rolled a four, and then I'll just say uh, select one piece, select a piece to move one space nearer, nearer to the finish. That's my action message. So if you if you've entered a one, if you get a one, sorry, then that's what happens. Now I'm going to do an elif. Uh, let's say they roll a two. Then uh, let's copy and paste this and just tweak it slightly. The action message can be uh, that they have to move two spaces nearer the finish. You're getting the idea. Let's copy and paste that and do this for number three. So we'll say, well, if they roll a three, we need to select a piece to move three spaces nearer to the finish. Finally, value is four. Then the action message might be select a piece to move back one space nearer to the start because that's what happens if you land um, if you get a four you have to pick one of your pieces to go back to the start so that's going to uh, roll the die and it's going to present a message to the user and we're going to need to know in the game um, that value so I'm going to return the randomly generated value to the part of the program that calls um, this procedure and um, also just to give a bit more control to the user I might do um, we might just use an input here and say something like press enter to roll the die and that just means that it will just sort of pause just before um, everything sort of happens and of course we've generated our action message but I haven't printed anything out so I need to add that in so I'm going to do print and I'm going to use a formatted string here I'm going to use the player name so I'm going to put that into zero um, uh, I've just realized I can't do that quite yet I have to say if uh, player turn is one then um, name is going to be equal to p1 name else and you'll see why I've done this in a minute, hopefully. Else name is player two's name. And then I'm going to say print. And my output message will say so-and-so rolled a... And then we're going to put another placeholder for the actual value. And then we're going to put in a placeholder that's going to show the action message. So if I do dot format on this, I can now drop in, well, where, what values do I want in those placeholders? Well, I want name, which is either player one's name or player two's name, depending on whose turn it is. Uh, I want to put in the value that's been rolled 
and I also want to put in the action message that I've generated depending on the value of um, the dice roll. So that's going to print that out to the users and it's going to show um, it's going to return that value so that I can use that in the uh, remaining logic of the game. So let's have a little go. Uh, when we start our program we're going to show the board and we're going to roll uh, the die. Oops. So well, let's roll the die and let's see what happens. Um, let's see what happens now if we run this. So let's do run. So let's play game and it shows my board. And it says player wants to turn, press enter to roll the die. And let's come back to the main menu. If I scroll up, I can see what happened. It said it's player one's turn, press enter to roll the die, and it says player one rolled a four. Select a piece to move back one space nearer to the start. And of course, I can't actually roll uh, backwards uh, from the start, but that's a little bit of logic we still need to add to our game. Um, it has regenerated the main menu. Let's play game again, because it should actually just regenerate with a different random uh, value. Let's see if it does. Let's roll the die. Let's scroll up and see what we got. And this time, roll a three. Select a piece to move three spaces nearer to the finish. So that seems to be working. So that's our roll die procedure, um, which we've now incorporated into our play game procedure.